da, da. Hello folks, I'm back and I'm not foxed anymore. Ha! Because what I was doing, oh, I can't drink my tea now. <laughs> what I was doing with this balance was it won't it won't zero itself with that on the top so what I've had to do is compensate compensate by basically weighing that and that weighs 176 grams so then I'm adding 176 grams to all of the other all the other numbers that I gave you you if you're doing this will have to depending on how your scale is you'll have to do the same or you may not need to you may just be able to adjust it on the on the little screw wheel here on the back okay so basically that's what I'm having to do so so here you see to these all of these figures I've just added 176 grams so 100 becomes 276 and and so on. So let's just just gonna get on with that now. And the next thing I've got to do is put in here 426 grams of where's my trowel? Where's my shovel gone? Oh, so I've got to put in here 426 grams. So I just have to. 100 and 26. Double check, 426, 426, yeah. This is like cooking, isn't it, really? So I've got the bentonite and the china clay or the kaolin. Right, and I've ticked that one off. So now I've got the soda ash, I'm going to tick that off. Soda ash, we need 576 grams. All of these, all of these ingredients, you see, they look all very similar. Uh, this is soda ash. It looks pretty similar to bentonite and to kaolin. All right. That's why it's important to have these things marked, okay, on your buckets, and to mark them off the list as you as you go down. Okay. I must remember, of course, to adjust the scale. Put the right amount. Five, seven, six. Five, seven, and six. The danger is, you see, because I'm doing this and I'm talking, it's best not to do this and be distracted um, with anybody or anything, just to concentrate on doing it. And I'm having to do it and talk to you, which is fine. I don't mind that. Okay, soda ash it's going in my bowl, my yard sale bowl. Right, next, ball clay, ball clay, 1026. And I have to add, I have to add a, a, a kilogram weight here. 1,026 and 26, yep, okay, so, we'll close this one, Mm 
there we are, 1026. Spoduline. Spoduline. Where's the spoduline? Here it is. Spoduline, and we need 1,676. Wait a minute. I can only go up to 1,500. Right, well, I'm going to do 1,500 and then add. The hundred and seventy six. It's like cooking, you see, isn't it really? Forget the hundred and seventy six. So one thousand six hundred and sixty six. I know it's kind of a boring clip in a way, you might say, well. take the wet off. So now I've actually got too much. Seven six. Well, that weighs one seven six. So, and we were. So I've got to add one seven six and one seven six, haven't I? One seven six plus one seven six. Six and six is twelve. Carry one. Two seven is fourteen. And one is fifteen. Carry one. One two three. You see, it's so easy, isn't it? You see, I could have made a mistake there. It's actually 352 grams. I've got to get, this has got to be reading on here, you see. 352, 176, that's the weight of that, plus the 176 that I couldn't get on before, which means it means it's 352. Ooh la la, right. Three, five, two. Oh yeah. Now. Well, very sensitive these these balances. They're, they're actually very good for for doing glazes. I, I I think for glazes these are the best. But for for uh, for weighing up balls of clay I don't. Not me. So I've got the, the 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 brew here. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to give it a a dry mix like this. This this is where it's a good it's a good moment to wear a mask now because I'm giving it a bit of a dry mix and um, could be a bit of dust. Yeah, I can see a bit of dust here. Now, what we're 
going to do is a bucket. I've got some water here. Get rid of that guy. There. So, I'm going to pour this in here. Just pour a bit of water in there. Not won't be enough, but I prefer to add the powder to the glaze rather than the water to the powder, okay? So, the table twice while you let the dust settle. <laughs> okay, I'll use one of these sticks in this case right now. bring the camera in you can see what's going on just change the set of focus here all right you can see there the the color of the going to do is it's good you see it's good you see you can see the whole you can see the whole process um all right we'll put this into there Not gonna fit on there yes he will fit good let's just pull back the camera now a bit going to pull it back a little bit so we're not so quite so on top of things so there you are you can see now So I'm just adding a bit more water. Best to add less water though then. What I mean is it's better to have less than too much. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for yeah. One of the either one of these guys, these are quite good for getting it through or of course one can use the old kind of plastic card as well either whatever works best for you I believe this mesh is as you can see it says 60 it really should be finer than that but that's all I've got. So I'm going to put that there. I'm going to get this. I'm going to take my mask off now because the dust has. Ooh, I want a drink of tea. <sighs> G. 
Cheers, everybody. Right. A little refreshment is good, isn't it? You might think, oh, it doesn't need sieving. It's all perfectly, perfectly fine, the materials. Why do you need to bother to sieve them? Well, sieving helps to mix the materials and blend them together. You might think it, it's not just to, to, it is of course to sieve out granular gritty particles, but it's actually also to, to blend it together. For example, if you had an oxide in this glaze, so it's something like, say, iron oxide, the, the process of putting it through the sieve actually mixes the iron content, the iron oxide. So. Now I'm probably doing a bit hasty with this. It wouldn't have been a bad idea just leave it to leave it, you know, just to this mixture um, to, to have left this mixture to slick down I believe is the technological word slake down. All right, here we are. Okay. So. Now you'll see some of this. This is probably the clay, the bull clay. Um Again, that's why the sieve, you see, I'm going to get that all through the sieve into the, into the lower section, pass it all through. You can see this is a, a nice sort of custard consistency. It's actually probably too thick at this stage to apply. We used to have it lower down. I always remember being terrified of it as a kid. When I went in the pottery, if anybody was sieving glaze, we had this thing. It was like a it was like a vibrating machine. It sort of stood, bolted down, and the sieve, the sieve had a hole through it, you see, with a wing nut on the other side there. And it bolted onto this thing and you turned it on and it made the most terrible noise. It was I, oop, I always thought it was like a, a cow mooing, so sort of, mm, like this, but it was really loud. And that made sieving stuff somewhat easier. You know, it would get through the sieve. It, it vibrated the sieve, you know, like this, and it all went through. Now when you get to this stage, you can see here, I think you can see anyway, it's quite lumpy. Now at this stage, what you've got to be a bit patient, okay, just to get this through through the sieve. Just, just push it through slowly with with the with the with the card. If you can mix up your own glazes like this, I mean actually to be quite honest with you, this is it's got quite a few ingredients this glaze, and it's got one, two, three, four, six separate uh, ingredients. For me, one of the more complicated glazes that I've made up. Um, I'm not saying it's complicated, but it's sometimes you know you can have glazes that are just two parts. For example, I'm going to mix up another glaze, which is going to be probably going to be uh, wood ash 
plus a, a red clay, a dried, a dried out red clay, like a flower pot clay. That 50% that and 50% wood ash. I'll give you a, a glaze, you see. Okay, well I've got to spend a bit of time now continuing here, pushing this through. And I, the, the clip, I think, it's, it's time that we drew it to a close because otherwise it's going to end up like half an hour, isn't it? So, my hands. I'll be continuing on now with that for the next five minutes, just to, just to finish it. So, we all need to keep practicing, don't we? with everything on all fronts. It's not just throwing, it's glazing, it's kilns, it's everything, the whole shooting match. So get stuck in, get some get some uh, materials uh, and glaze, uh, glazes are, are easy to mix up if you just follow a few simple basic rules and, and exercise a bit of care and myth and be a Methodist. <laughs> do, do it methodically and tick off as you put into the to the bucket um, all of the ingredients good keep practicing see you around bye bye